I want to show you um, a variety of different substrates, which is your paper or fabric or whatever your base is to go on InkAid, give you some pros and cons and things to look for when you're shopping. This is just a regular like cardstock paper, something that's a little thicker. Um, before I mentioned that it's easier to work with papers that are a little thicker as you're just starting to explore this world of um, alternative printing. So this is something that I highly recommend. Also just think about like the um, surface texture. You know, if you are working with something that's super smooth, it's gonna be a lot easier to coat. Anything that's more textured will be more difficult and I'll show you that in a second. Also, because we have the beautiful iridescence and the white pre-coat, um, using like a darker color as a background and then showing that white pre-coat over top is going to do some really interesting things for your images. So this is just a common black cardstock um, paper that we're going to use. And just make sure that whatever um, substrate or paper, media, whatever you're using is acid free or that you know the, chem the makeup of it so that you know like the longevity of it because the weakest part of your print is actually going to be the paper. Um, all ink aid products are as archivable as any other commercial photographic products. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love to use is um, any of the watercolor based papers. One reason in particular is it has a wonderful smooth surface. So whenever you do the coatings, you get to see a bit of the texture that comes through. In addition, you have the edges that you can deckle, which makes for some really interesting creative prints. I also love to use any of the handcrafted um, papers and using this like in conjunction with some of the translucent pre-coats because then you get to see some of the texture of the paper through this as well as the color. So this is really great if you want to take a black and white image and really get to see some of this lovely, um, lovely details going on. Here's another paper that has some um, extreme tone and texture inside of it, you know, but this can work really well if it's put on the right subject matter. Maybe not so much for a portrait, but really great selection for like a landscape or something that's more of an organic feel. Um, here's another handcrafted paper. This tone actually can look like more sepia or rusted or tea stained, which is other alternative processes that you can find and it's just a much easier way with less mess. Now a couple of things to avoid when selecting papers. Um, this is actually recycled paper that's made from straw and the problem with this paper is you actually have pieces of it that will flake off. And the only reason why you want to avoid this is because you don't want it in your printer. I mean, you can, whatever you can get through your printer you basically can print on, but you just want to think about um, what, you're, what you're moving through. Now the ink aid product when you paint it over top of this will help to seal some of those in, but if there's any pieces that are coming off a little bit, you just want to be careful of that surface texture because of the density of your paper. Also speaking of density of your paper, if you're using like a, a hand pressed, hand created um, paper like this one with a lot of texture, this is going to be the same issue as far as your print head going over the top because what happens is, is your print head goes like this, you know, and it's not actually going to be able to fill all of the crevices because this is super textured. So it's just like if you were painting your walls at home, you use a roller and you have to go over a couple of times just to make sure that you fill all of the cracks. It would be the same thing with something like this, which may be your aesthetic, but just something to be mindful of when you're approaching um, your printer. The other thing that's wonderful about Inkade is you have the ability to print on delicate fabrics or papers like this. This is actually a paper that's um, a super fine weave and you can see how light this is. But something like this would just become trash in your printer. So you have to think about um, creating like a, a back or a base to this to be able to move it through. Here's a sample of some fabric as well. So just unbleached or bleached muslin works really, really well because it's a nice tight weave, gives you a really great impression. Um, silk is also lovely to put through. For these types of um, fabrics or paper that are super thin, you wanna use what's called a carry sheet. And this is one that I've just made up. All it is is a backing you know, something that's a little thicker that will actually move the paper through your printer. Because otherwise, if you put this in here, you know, your printer's like, I can't even move this through um, to advance it. So you just wanna put some sort of backing on it or have something a little thicker. You can use paper if you want, but you can run into some complications as far as um, having the, the ink bleed into some other paper and then it fuses. So we recommend that you'd use something with like a plastic or, you know, poly background.